Yeah, I mean, we're hoping to be to be an eight-figure brand within three years. That's that's the goal. Oh right, we're back with a brand new video, and I've got a very exciting one for you today because in today's video, I'm going to be interviewing one of my students. Nick. Now, Nick's story is very interesting. Before he met me, before jumping on my mentorship, he was operating as a freelancer, offering Facebook ads to a bunch of different clients, but working as a solo entrepreneur. Now, he jumped on my mentorship to make the transition to being an agency owner. And in just a few short months, he was able to get into my 10K club, which are all the students that have gone from zero to 10K plus with their agency in record breaking time. We're literally talking about three to five months in most cases and scale well past the 10K a month mark. So we're going to be talking about that transition that he made from being a freelancer to being an agency owner and scaling well past the 10k month mark but we're also going to be talking about what he's doing right now because one of the benefits that i talk about in my channel of building an e-com agency is the fact that you can actually go from being an agency owner to then going into starting your own e-com brands right because you've done that for a myriad of different clients for the past few months and years right and so that is the position that he's currently at he's still running his e-com agency crushing it but now he's adding more fuel to his income and his impact and he's going to be starting his own e-com brand so i'm very excited to to talk about that transition as well so without further ado let's go ahead and let's go right into it let me see hello <laughs> okay <laughs> <I'll leave laughs> <that around>. <laughs> <laughs> i'm recording now so <laughs> cool, cool, cool. it's all good but yeah man how you been pretty good man being very busy working on this e-com project it's like you gotta you gotta tell me about it yeah, man, this is like, I think, I think honestly, my, my whole dream was to start like my own branded e-com stuff mm -hmm. and like actually, actually like build up something of, of value, you know, something where you have yeah. your own inventory, your own brand, something yeah, yeah. like where you put, you know, years of work in and, uh, actually building something, you know, so it's what, uh, we're, you know, right now in the, in the starting phases and it's uh it's been pretty fun already so just mm -hmm. uh so so you were saying um how long have you have you uh been essentially uh, at this what stage are you currently at um so right i've been i think it was like beginning of march where i decided that this was like what i wanted to do so i have a actually a business partner in the uk mm -hmm. uh, a guy i worked with uh in my agency actually he was like one of my media buyers and uh he was like hey man why don't we start like an e-com brand together um so that's kind of like what we started doing uh we actually started like uh, experimenting with drop shipping and just realized that that was kind of like a, a business model that not neither of us really enjoyed doing and mm. not very sustainable and we're like why are we putting all this effort into this if we might as well just you know invest all the money that we've earned uh through media buying through agency and stuff and invest that in a brand for ourselves so we just kind of like joined forces and uh yeah since yeah i think the beginning of march or i think actually it was probably the end of march where we just decided like okay this is something we're gonna do uh didn't have any idea like which niche or anything like that all we knew was like we wanted to start something mm. um so just brainstormed and you know slowly started getting some ideas of like which niche we could tap into and uh, yeah, now we're kind of settled on that. We're just making sure that this is like really what we want to commit to the specific niche and uh, talking to suppliers, those types of things. So um, working out like pre-launch strategies. It's, uh, it's pretty cool. That's cool, man. Um, so this guy, this media buyer, right? This partner uh, of, of yours, was that the guy you were, uh, that, that you hired like when, when uh, we're doing the mentorship, like the guy you, you were telling me about? Uh, no, that was another guy actually. So this was, this okay. was the guy before him. Um, he was okay. actually running at like one account up until I think until September or something for me. So he was just doing one account. Um, I always knew that his ambitions weren't like media buying. I always knew he wanted to mm. build an e-com brand as well. So <laughs> yeah, it's kind of funny how it like progresses this way. But uh, yeah, man. So that's that's uh, that's how it went. Cool um and i mean what what has so you so you started this at the beginning of march right what was like the the strategy so you guys like got crystal clear on the on the um on the industry the the, the niche or or what was like the the first like stepping stone yeah first 
it was more like okay what kind of business model do you want to tap into is it more of a subscription or like a one-off kind of thing you know mm -hmm. i take it or a bit more low ticket but then like having people repurchase over and over again so uh that was kind of the first step kind of establishing that and i think we were both set on you know we want to build something where people buy multiples of right mm -hmm. so once we knew that uh there was like a few niches where we both had experience so we we're looking to skincare um mm -hmm. For example, and then another one was uh, supplements. So, okay, that that was the first stage. You went with, well, I mean, are are you you want to share or? Yeah, I mean, like I'm, uh, I can't share like the specific yeah, like, of course, of course. niche yeah. we're tapping into, but okay. it is it is in the supplement space. Okay. Um, okay. Cool. I understand you're doing something similar, right? Uh, yeah, it could be. Uh, I mean, it, it is it is in that that uh that industry that niche as well. Um, so that's cool, man. But it's top secret, right? For now, yeah. But I'm literally talk documenting the, the the whole journey on my on my YouTube. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm putting out a series like building a, a hundred million uh, ecom uh, ecom brand. Uh, so so far we've got like episode one out. Um, but I mean the the, the, the development is, is well underway. Like uh, we we just put through the the order should be should be like arriving in six eight weeks. Um, so so yeah. Yeah, really cool, man. Like, so we're pretty much on the same like stage right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it is it, it, uh, literally, man. And 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 that's why you know I I talk about this quite a bit in, in on the channel. The fact that like and and even in the mentor program, like you you know one of the great things about an ecom agency is the fact that like you progress as an entrepreneur. I mean, it just lends itself so great to other you know business models, right? It's just a natural progression towards that, like building your own ecom brands if that's what you want to do, right? Because um, before building your ecom brand you were like super, um, you know, you, you were super honing in, in what I call the kind of like the Ecomite stage where like you are, you were building this kind of incubator, right? For Ecom brands. Absolutely. Yeah, man. Like I think having the agency gave me a lot of like, first of all, you work with like so many different brands, right? So you have all these brands in all these different niches, like they couldn't be any more different from each other. So you, you kind of start seeing patterns and you start understanding like, what these brands are doing really well and also what they're really not doing very well. So mm -hmm. you kind of start to identify, okay, this is like some trends I'm seeing. This works mm -hmm. really well for this brand, but this doesn't work well for that brand. And uh, yeah. from there you can kind of start thinking, okay, what, what would I do myself? You know, how would I improve mm -hmm. that? How would I make that better? Yeah. And it's so unconscious. Uh, I, I don't know if, if this is the case for you, but like, you're not you're you're not like taking notes like oh this founder is you know doing this wrong right but it's, it's just so unconscious like it, it almost it's just this all this knowledge that they transfer onto you just by working with them right have you felt that it's, it's like super unconscious or or you were actively like looking at things that they could be doing better um i would say both um you know on a, on a very strategic level like you see some some strategic things that are are like fundamentally wrong with the business you know maybe mm -hmm. their margins aren't uh you know they have very tight margins for example which makes it very hard to scale if they're using paid traffic so these types of strategic things like you definitely notice um yeah. just going through the numbers you're like okay there's no way that this business model could work at scale you know <laughs> yeah <laughs> for example and then there's other things where it's like the intangible stuff where it's like the mindset of the business owner how they approach the their own brand um you know are they like more of a short-term thinker or a long-term thinker and you just mm -hmm. kind of start to adapt those mindsets as well or notice those those small okay. things um yeah if if you were to like look back right is there any specific founder or any you don't have to mention names right it's just any any brand specific founder any lesson that you that you vividly remember learning from your journey as a as an ecom agency owner well, that's a really good question. <laughs> um, one thing I noticed, and I'm not thinking of a specific founder, but more of like a general e-com building mindset is that you have a very, you have the difference between like a founder that just only cares about sales and being as profitable as possible all the time. And the founder that's like, maybe we'll break even for a couple months. If that means that we're able, that we're able to acquire a whole bunch of customers that we can upsell to later and build like lifetime value over a long period of time, start building brand, 
you know, really focus yeah. on the branding, um, really building something for the long term. And I think if you want to build something sustainable, that's the kind of mindset you have to have. Like, okay, maybe we're not going to make money right now, but yeah. if that means we're going to be profitable later down the road, that's fine too. Yeah, hundred percent. I think that's that's a pattern that I've seen with uh, ecom founders as well. Is the fact that like. You know, obviously, you, you got to have a good balance, right? You got to pay the bills, right? And, and you got to pay your team and all that stuff. But the ones that think more long term, the ones that think, hey, hey, let's actually build brand as we make money and as we scale the brand. Um, like th those are the ones that, that, that win, right? Whether it's through organic content or building a bit of a community, right? Or et cetera, et cetera. Like those are uh, the, the brands that win at the end. It, 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 are there any ways that like you have, um, you know, when it comes to building brand, are there any ways that like stand out to you as, the go-to methods or yeah what would you say when it comes to building brand what were the, some of the some of the, the keys uh as, a, as an econ brand um i mean there's so many things right that make a good e-commerce brand um mm -hmm. i think i think there's a few like strategical slash yeah i would say strategical things that stand out one of them is having good margins right so um if if the client has like 60 percent profit margins 70 the higher the profit margins the more you're able to sustain at scale and also the more you're able to spend to acquire a customer yeah so that's number one um and i always say like the one who's able to spend most acquiring a customer usually wins yeah, yeah. Uh, because otherwise you know if you're able to spend say 70 dollars to acquire a customer and your competitor is only able to spend 40 you're mm -hmm. going to be able to outcompete them on you know any platform really so that's number one, um, build a good brand. I would say those fundamentals are really important. Um, is it something that is a one-off purchase or uh, something you can purchase frequently? So it can increase lifetime value over a period of time. Um, you know, then you can talk about upsells or a, a product that is perishable, right? Mm -hmm. So a product that you can use for a month and then it finishes and you buy a new one. Um, I think that's, that's really, good way to sustain a brand. Um, another one is so more intangible, which is like building a community around your brand. So I noticed the ones that did really well, they, they had Facebook groups, you know, like discussing the, the topic, uh, yeah. whatever the brand was, for example, we had a food client and they had like a little community about dieting, etc. And, yeah. you know, you really build that strong, those strong loyal followers that are going like, to promote your brand like crazy. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Uh, similar kind of vibes on on Instagram, for example. Loyal following, always commenting, engaging. Mm. Um, so those things are really important, I think. Um, yeah, what else? I find that also from a marketing side, it's like the brands that do really well, they always multi-channel. So they're not only relying on Facebook for results because the reality is like, you know, you know, with the whole iOS thing, Facebook's constantly changing. Mm -hmm. um, it's just, it's just a big mess. Uh, you know, one week and then the next week you're profitable again. So it's, it's, it's a roller coaster ride for, for these channels and the ones that really succeed, you know, they have, they're doing influencer marketing, they're doing Facebook, they're doing email, uh, maybe Snapchat, Pinterest, all at once and Google ads, and they're combining all that to, you know, really be uh, multi-channel. In terms of now your journey, right, as, uh, you know, starting the e-com brand, um, what would you say have been like the biggest roadblocks or, or the most challenging things coming from, you know, being a, uh, making that transition essentially? So the hardest things, making the transition. Mm. Um, it's like starting from scratch again, you know? So it's um, like when I decided I wanted to do this, it was like looking up on a mountain, you know? And you're- Did you, you caught you caught all the, you basically like stopped cold turkey, like the, the e-com agency? Yeah, I mean, I still have some clients. So, okay, you okay. know, that's still like, it's still relying on that uh, okay. in terms of cash flow, but um, it's not completely cold turkey, but at the same time, it's like, you are starting something new that could be potentially be much bigger. Yeah. And it's very daunting to just see like the, the work you have to do. Mm. So I think I'm still trying to overcome a lot of those things, yeah. but what I've learned is that it's literally just like, 
you could either look up and see how high the mountain is, or you could just look down and just take it step by step and just yeah, keep sure. walking, you know? Um, and as long as you keep doing that, I think at some point you'll, you'll, you'll be at the top and you'd be like, Oh, wow, I got here. Nice. Mm -hmm. Instead of like being like, Oh my God, it's so far away. It's <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and, and I remember we were talking once about like, um, the entrepreneurial journey, right. And, and how like it starts from even the little things, right. Like from like, you know, uh, cause I, I believe you started like reading and all that stuff when you were like, how, how young remember that conversation we had, like, you know, even from like, you know, you know, the, the, the pickup lessons and, uh, and, uh, and the mindset and all that stuff, like how that translates into, into business, because at the end of the day, like you just have to be a, a, a relentless person, right. When it comes to, uh, when it comes to that, that type of, uh, building a business. Yeah, for sure. I mean, like, I think a lot of the work that you have to do is, is personal work, right? Like, mm -hmm. um, there's so much internal stuff that you have to build up. You have to build up that internal confidence, that resilience, that willingness to learn. Um, there's so many things, right. That if you don't work on those and you kind of ignore those and then you decide to build a business, it's, uh, it can be very, very difficult. So, yeah, I think like what you said, like a lot of that time when I was younger was spent, like kind of working on myself, building more confidence. Mm. So then, like now it's not as daunting and you know you kind of have that resilience because i think one one thing really that's really important is having resilience right it's um mm -hmm. like you're gonna fail inevitably and sometimes you just gotta put your head down and keep going and not not care too much but i think it's very easy to take those failures very personally and yeah take them as, as big rejections but in reality you're just learning mm -hmm. What, was there a time during your agency journey when you have when you when you just had to use that that resilience like what, what was a really maybe, maybe you didn't have one right but i'm sure you did uh, what was a really tough moment where you where you were like damn like you know i may, maybe scaled to this amount right and and now i'm back back to score one or or i i backtracked a little bit uh and i gotta gotta step things up again yeah i think it was actually before before we met um last i think it was last march or something right um, a year ago, um, I think at that point I, I was, I've reached out to so many clients, you know, and sent so many looms and just nothing was really working. Mm -hmm. And at that point I was like faced with the decision. It's like, okay, do I invest in your help or do I just completely quit? Because honestly, at that point it's like 50, 50 right there, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, and yeah, I just decided to to work with you and you gave, gave me that kind of like new energy, that new perspective of, okay, like, you know, you can do this. Mm -hmm. Here's a system to do it. Just execute on that. And that's what I did. And, you know, I got my first client like within what, three weeks of working yeah, together. I, so literally, I, I do remember, uh, yeah, you telling me like, it was like on the third week you had that, uh, that false line. Yeah. And it was a great client. Honestly, it was like one of, I think my best client, to be honest. Um, they stayed on for a good seven, eight months, six, seven, eight months, something like this. Yeah. Um, scaled their business like crazy. So like, yeah, it was, that changed my whole perspective as well. Like, okay, it is possible, you know? Mm -hmm. And at the time I was also building my team and, you know, just gaining that confidence overall. And I felt like that would, that made me a bit more resilient as well. Mm -hmm you've gone through a lot of phases and, and that's that's one of the things I, I love about your journey like it's literally like spot on you know ecom agency founder like um uh, you know all, all the different stages you can tap into right because when i first met you you know back back um back then you were doing mostly freelancing right what i mean what were some of the what were some of the the changes or the shifts you had to do um to go from freelancing to being a an agency owner like what, what are the the main differences between that type of business model and the agency model. Yeah. Freelancing, you're working very much inside the business and as an, as a business owner, I mean, that's the difference. You're a business owner, right? You're not mm -hmm. actually doing the, the actual media buying or whatever technical thing it is that you're, that you're doing. You're looking at things from a more perspective, uh, strategic perspective. So you're mm -hmm. working on the business and not in the business and it's some, it, <laughs> the hardest thing is to let that go. Like you, you think you know how to run Facebook ads and yeah, sure. You have some experience in that, but 
you know, when you hire a media buyer, you also have to let them do their thing, you know, and respect that. Yeah. Yeah. And um, that is really, really difficult in the beginning because yeah. you kind of have to trust them blindly to do their thing. Obviously, you, can, you have to hold them accountable as well, but, you know, at some, some point you have to let that go and let them do their thing. Otherwise, they're not going to succeed either. Mm-hmm. It's a big shift because you go from doing very technical things to then doing very strategic things, I would say. What are some of the things you looked for in this in that first hire? Because I remember us going through through the hiring process, right? Um, what, what, what are some things that, you know, some of the traits, some of the things that you looked for in that first hire? Because it was a bit different to usually what I recommend, right? Because you had you already, you were already experienced, right, with media binds. And so you were looking for a different type of person. Um, not so much, it wasn't so much the experience, right? But it was more about the, the hunger and, and kind of the, the person that they could shape up to be. Uh, can you walk us through some of the traits that you looked for in that first ever hire uh, for your agency? Um, yeah, so the the guy I hired when I was with you, right? So this mm-hmm. guy, um, he actually reached out to him on LinkedIn and um, he happened to live in, in Holland. So he was like, okay. hey, let's meet up, you know? And at that point I was, I didn't think of him as a very experienced. So I was like, kind of disregarding that. I'm like, okay, well, if he's not that experienced, it's not going to be much of value to the agency, but he was just pushing to hang out all the time. Yeah. And I'm like, okay, this guy's actually serious about this. You know, like he's showing mm-hmm. me this intent of, Hey, look, I'm serious. I'm willing to meet up in person, like travel from whatever city he was at to, to meet me, hang out with me. Um, and that's what he did. And we hung out and I was like, okay, wow, this guy, maybe he's not the most experienced guy, but he's definitely hungry to learn. Mm-hmm. And I remember I was talking to you and we were like in between, I think it was another, another candidate. And it was one of them was way more experienced, but seemed to be more, um, I don't know, less hungry. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And this, this guy was, was more hungry, but less experienced. And, I think at one point I, I just decided, okay, I'm just going to go for this. The guy was more hungry. And honestly, he was the best media buyer I ever worked with because he was just proactive about everything, putting in that extra work. Um, you know, I never needed to worry about anything because he would handle it. And he also learned a lot, like while working yeah. with me. And since I already knew a little bit of Facebook ads, you know, I could guide him as well and we could strategize together. And honestly, I didn't need to worry that much about the results either. Um, so traits wise, yeah, someone that's, you know, hungry, um, willing to grow and you also need to provide them the opportunity to grow as well. Mm -hmm. I always see that with, with very hungry people though. Like it's, it's, uh, they, they learn quick, right? They, 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 they grow very quickly. I mean, you were saying like, what, what was kind of the environment that you provided uh, for this person to be able to grow? Yeah. So first of all, freedom to kind of do their own thing. So I didn't want to micromanage. I didn't want to tell them how to run Facebook ads. I mean, I, I tried to, it was like a challenge for myself to be more open-minded towards that as well, you know, cause I had a certain way of running ads. He has a certain way of running ads. So it's like, um, you, like I said, you have to let that go and providing them the opportunity to kind of experiment as well and make that okay. And another thing is if he, if he fails or he makes mistakes or something, then also accept that and, and not bash him for it or, you know, mm. make him feel bad about it. Cause you know, I always told him like, yeah, this is part of the experience. If you make a mistake, it's cool. Just let me know. And we'll, we'll like diagnose it together and we'll solve it together. And it's part of learning. And mm. I think he really appreciated that. So giving him that freedom to, to really accept or develop. Um, yeah. Uh, and I think, I think every person is different, but he was definitely like that. And I'm like that as well. You put me, throw me in the deep end. I'll like, I'll figure it out somehow, you know, uh, some people need more guidance. Some people need less guidance. So it's also like a judgment call there kind of a gut feeling as well. Like how, how much responsibility can this person take? But he, he definitely took, took all the responsibility he could. And he was also pushing me to, to give him more and more responsibility mm-hmm. as well. He's like, Oh, I want to like jump on calls with clients. Like, I want to do this. I want to do that. And I would let him mm. do it. And uh, it was nice to see him grow like that. That's amazing. Um, yeah, I feel like a lot of people, well, 
I feel like the the hiring process is is such a neglected part um, because this person can literally like, I mean, it's not they're not gonna make or break your business, but it's gonna be if you hire the right person, it's gonna be a, an incredible addition. Um, so so that's kind of the transition from freelancing to the agency model, right? Uh, now when you started mainly running ads for you know Facebook ads for these ecom clients, you soon realized that you had to take a bit more control over the the ecom funnel, right? Um, and, and that's again another thing that I, that I preach a lot is like it's not just about you know cool ads, right? Uh, like you want to make sure that the creative is on point. You know you want to make sure that you know email marketing is a thing. You know um, a conversion rate optimization, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So, and I, I know you you um, you went really heavy on this, right? Because uh, we we're talking about like the the um, agency, you know, the, the ecom incubator model, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So that's kind of the next transition you made, right? From being a more Facebook ads heavy focused. Um, Ecom agency to then be more of a broad ecom agency that looked at the whole ecom funnel. My question is, what are some of the elements, right, of that ecom funnel that you first looked at and you were like, I need to get involved in that uh, because that's going to make a, my clients a lot of money and it's going to make me a lot, a lot more money. Yeah. So, so number one thing was we were running ads, simply just running creative that the client had, um, noticing that that was a big bottleneck because honestly, at some point. Because first of all, clients, a lot of the time don't have any idea of like what converts on Facebook. Mm -hmm. So some do, some, like some are really great. And, you know, if they're really good at creating creative themselves, like let them create creative themselves. But um, some have no clue as yeah. to how to grab the attention. Most, you know? most wouldn't, M most don't, right? You, you would say, or? Would I would say, say most don't, no, no. Yeah, yeah like 20% like no, probably, in my experience. Um, but then they really know, you know, so, uh, and 80% have, have no clue, like what converts. So, uh, mm -hmm. that was the first thing we identified was, okay, creative, we need to take control of this because if we don't like the ad accounts, it's going to blow up, uh, it's, it's performance is going to dip like crazy. Like mm -hmm. we need to start developing our creative. So that, that was the number one thing. And, um, yeah, we started like taking their content, re-editing it, uh, getting graphic design work done. Mm -hmm. uh, etc so that was that was the number one thing was the the creative package did you charge them on, on top uh, for that or was that like included as part of your uh, paid ad service so the first client was actually we ran their ads first and then we introduced them to a creative package so it was kind of like an extra creative package on top of the original yeah and then the second client it was like almost a given Actually, no, I think the second client after that, we actually did another creative package and the third one, it was just included. Okay. Because okay. at that point, it's like, it's a given, like we just need to do creatives. Um, mm -hmm. So we just increased the price a little bit as well okay. to accommodate for that. So so the first one, you cross-sold you cross -sold them to, to, to that package, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Which I'm 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 really big advocate of uh, the fact that like you can sell them onto other services once you're getting them really good results. What do you think is like the best timing to introduce other services? Oh, well, that's a really good question. I think it, it's very dependent on the client, but um, they first need to see that you're you're getting some sort of result, right? Mm -hmm. And you need to build their trust and build some rapport with them. And that, that would usually take one or two months before you start getting some, some actual results for the client and they start seeing that, you know, you're a trustworthy partner. And then I think at that point, they'll basically trust you to, uh, to upsell them because it's, it's very easy to sell to someone that's already bought from you. Right. And has your trust mm -hmm. and knows that you're legit. Mm -hmm. Um, I think with this client, it took us like a month. Cause it was, it was a very obvious thing. Like we need to do this. And they were like, okay, it's a no brainer. <laughs> yeah. So let's just do it. And then there was another client where we literally had like a whole year. Uh, this was like the first client I had, it was like, I think or yeah, around eight months to a year where we already worked together. And then we upsold them on a creative package only then. Okay. But, uh, they were also like very, very, it was a no brainer for them as well. Yeah. Yeah. Especially cause they already know how you work. Right. And, and that's again, one of the things I'm, I'm really big on is like, the, the the hardest thing of a sale is like building that trust right and obviously showing the process the results and all that stuff but like they already know how do you how you work like they've seen the results honestly the the easiest sale you will make as an agency owner oh absolutely yeah 
Yeah. Um, and I mean, I've never sold like CRO or email marketing. Uh, mm -hmm. I never got to that point, but I'm pretty sure that that's pretty much a no brainer as well for, mm -hmm. for a client, uh, especially if they don't have that already or they're not working with an agency or something like that. Mm -hmm. You talked about building report, right? And one of the things, uh, you know, we talked about in the mentorship is that it's, it's not just about the results side of things, right? But it's about communication and reporting. And oftentimes, like, that is like 50% of the equation, right? Or even more, right? Sometimes. Um, what are some of the kind of like the mindsets that you have around client experience and uh, taking care of the clients? Because you have a, a pretty a pretty good uh, retention rate. So what are some of the things that you've cultivated during your journey, maybe systems, um, that have helped you keep the clients for, for a while? Yeah, so it's a really, really good question because uh, this is probably the one thing that is my biggest pain point as well. Mm -hmm. It's like, first of all, getting building the trust with the client, building the rapport with the client. Um, yeah, I would say expectation setting is, is so, so key. Because if you set the right expectations from day one, then those expectations are set and they know kind of how the process works, etc. But once you start changing expectations here and there, you kind of start losing that trust, you know, um, you tell them you promise them maybe some certain results. Like those things, if you promise them a certain result and you don't get the results, they're going to leave you the next day. It's, mm -hmm. it's almost inevitable. So that's, that's one thing I've learned is like, you have to be very, very, very clear in your expectations and they mm -hmm. need to know how you work, how you operate, um, that this is a, a long-term play, um, uh, instill those men's mindsets onto them as well. Um, but it's, it's still one of the hardest things to do because, you know, you're dealing with people, um, people are emotional, uh, they're not going to be very rational about the whole process. So you also need to reassure them, jump yeah. on calls. Um, give them every update, uh, a monthly, uh, weekly update with Loom, for example, every Monday, another update on Thursday, keep them in the loop, keep them educated about the process. So mm -hmm. I think that's also very important. Like if you educate them out about the Education, process, yeah. yeah. So a lot of clients, they don't understand what's going on. They're just like, mm -hmm. get me results. You know, that's their mindset. Yeah. Give, me, give me the result. Yeah. But then you, you have to educate them that that's not how it works. It's uh, first of all, it's a partnership. You're working yeah. together. You're not working for them. That's massive. Uh, yeah. Especially in the e-com space. It is. Yeah. Shit. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the, the, yeah. I mean, there's so many clients that kind of will outsource their problems to an agency. And I think those are clients to, to be wary of that, you know, they, they have a certain problem like, oh, we can't get a certain amount of sales. We'll just outsource the problem to an agency so that we do get those amount of sales. Mm -hmm. And I think that's, that's a very dangerous mindset to have. It's yeah. more like, Hey, an agency is more of like adding more fuel to the fire, right? Taking that expertise, but it's also a mutual partnership at the same time. Like, you know, they need to carry their weight in terms of, you know, providing you with the assets you need, providing you with the information you need, um, back and forth. It's a back and forth, uh, communication for sure. And workflow in terms of, uh, kind of, shifting gears a bit right um on the lifestyle front because i i always want to talk about obviously the the tangible strategies all that stuff but also on the, on the lifestyle front right because i think i mean you're you're a pretty big a big advocate of like not you know not the not um succumbing to the toxic work culture of like the agency space which is you know works six to eight hours a day banging out hundreds of cold emails cold calls and doing all this shit right that doesn't actually get many results but you know, being, a, being smart and, and building automations and all that stuff, which is, again, something that, that we, we spoke about um, during the mentorship. What is like, as a, as, a, as, a, as, a, as a founder or entrepreneur, what is your ideal lifestyle? Or what did that change as you transitioned? Because I also remember us talking about like how we love the game, right? Like we, we just love doing our, the, the, the stuff that we do. And like, we you know, we don't mind working on it, but have you found, have you, have you, like found the sweet spot uh, where you strike the balance between work and uh, and uh, and uh, lifestyle and all that stuff. Yeah, I think I definitely did. Um, I found myself like even compared to a year ago, just waking up way more, just excited to work, happy to work, and uh, it, it comes down to removing some of that pressure I put on myself. 
um, which also comes down to like how many hours you work per day. Like you, you could really burn yourself out very easily, you know. Um, mm. Clients are always going to message you all the time, you know. <laughs> mm. So it's super stressful, and they're always going to want something. Um, so what I've implemented was Saturdays I don't do any work. I don't touch it. I just fully, fully, fully relax. Yeah. So that I I get that energy and that passion back again to start crushing it um, on Sunday or on Monday again. Uh, and and Sunday I'll usually work like half a day or three fourths of the day. Um, and you know, Friday Friday evening to Saturday I'm gonna be fully relaxed. And that was honestly the the key the key thing here because I, I used to work seven days a week and honestly like doing that a couple <laughs> times in a row you get a complete burnout. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um so that was a bit that was a big thing and and then being okay with that you know that was also another thing because like sometimes you feel guilty for not working so mm -hmm. i kind of taught myself it's okay don't feel guilty like this is what this is actually going to help you grow if anything because you're sure. going to come back the next day more hungry rather than just more burnt out and like the next you're going to be waking up on monday thinking oh man like i have to do all this work instead of like i'm ready to crush the day i'm rejuvenated re-energized etc yeah well that's that's massive uh, i feel like i mean the 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 feeling guilty is is uh is i, I feel like something that 85 percent of entrepreneurs probably feel like when you take a break like you feel guilty of, of taking that break and this isn't it's no bueno it's uh it's pretty unhealthy man yeah absolutely um i mean the other thing was like um going to dubai you were there as well at the same time. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> we should have um, we should have uh, met up, man. We should have uh, yeah, had a like, and stuff, but we could make it happen. <laughs> we, were, we were very close, I think, to, to meeting up yeah. at that point. Um, but the, uh, that was a game changer as well because the whole kind of thing, you know, every day is very mundane, day in day out, and yeah, luckily, um, you know, we're both fortunate enough um, to be flexible in terms of where we can work and how we can work and at what mm -hmm. times we can work. And, um, yeah, it's, it's like a real pr privilege to be able to just go somewhere and go on vacation, especially during these times. Um, mm -hmm. and that honestly, like I came back from that vacation. So re-energized, so just so ready to go, you know? Yeah. Um, and I think in terms of lifestyle, you also, you got to take those breaks. You do, you really do. Mm -hmm. And this way of working, you know, working remotely as well, it just allows you to do all these things. Mm -hmm. Do you have like a set time for, for those vacations or, or no? Like uh, per year, you mean? Yeah, yeah. Or you just like spontaneous? Usually spontaneous, yeah. Yeah. Okay. I should probably set some sort of like time limit or something, but... No, I'm the same, man. I, I'm. I, it's kind of like when you feel it, you know, like, oh, I feel like I'm I'm hitting a creative roadblock or, or something like that, or I I just don't feel the fire as much anymore. Probably a good time to like take some time off. Yeah, and then and, you know when I do go on those vacations, I'll still work a little bit. I'll still, we'll still work at one to two hours a day, but it's like mm -hmm. for me that feels almost like I'm not doing work. So, um, and then maybe on the weekend I'll just take the whole weekend off uh, mm -hmm. during that vacation. But it's it's exactly like you said, like. I, I don't believe in being very strict and having like all these strict rules either. Yeah. Uh, maybe it would help to have some sort of guideline. Like, <laughs> yeah. Uh, but in, honestly, in the future, I see myself just like traveling to say to Portugal for like two months, just living there uh, and working. You, you have to go to Comporta, man. Somewhere Where is this? In, in Portugal. I, I was just there. Uh, yeah. I mean, there's a, there's a place that, because you, you have a girlfriend, right? Yeah. You guys would love it. It's just incredibly relaxing, very few people, uh, and just scenery is beautiful. What's it called? Comporta? Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll send it. I'll send it after the, the, uh, the, the call. Sounds good. I, I, uh, I like what you said there, uh, that you don't have like a lot of structures. I mean, I, I'm, I'm sure you're a very systematic, like analytical guy. I know that, right? And I think in your business, you know, you do, right? Um, especially when that, that was a massive, massive, um, focus of mentorship, but, uh, I feel like in, in your personal life, you, you kind of just flow a bit more, right? Are there any specific like routines, habits that you have in place or it's just kind of like you get to work and, and you just do the work and you just hang out uh, when, when it's time to hang out with friends and all that stuff? Yeah, so that, I mean, it's, it's 
I see it like as a as a balance, right? So like flowing a bit more is actually something that I actively work on as well. It's like mm. I see it as sometimes some of my one of my weaknesses, you know. So I'm like, okay, yeah, I gotta flow yeah. a bit more, like let things go a little bit more, not yeah. be too rigorous all the time. But yeah, when I'm on a work day, I'm very very structured, you know. Um, yeah, yeah. To the point of like, you know, I wake up at exactly the same time. I'll do my meditation. I'll clean clean the house, listen to audiobooks. I have like my little morning routine, and then I'll have like my two to three hour work block in the morning. And then I'll have like my keto lunch, like, you know, very specific. I'll have my workout at six and then, you know, my work block in between. So all that is very structured, but then outside when it comes to like leisure time, like I have no structure whatsoever. Mm -hmm. Like Mm -hmm. I I leave that completely open to to whatever. And sometimes I'll just throw around the whole routine and completely like mess things up. And that's also kind of nice not to have that exact same routine every day. Yeah. Yeah, man. I think um, like one, one of the things that I, that I found and, and yeah, flowing is definitely one of the things that like I think all, all entrepreneurs should work on a bit more because, uh, you know, there's, there's a lot of thoughts that are ingrained in, in, in our heads from like podcasts and audiobooks. Like you have to have like this double routine and do this, this and this and this, right? Uh, and then when you actually like break free from that and, and you start trying things uh, in your morning routine that actually come more naturally to you. That's, that's, I think when you have like a big breakthrough when it comes to habits and routines, right? Where the stuff that you do actually energizes you, it doesn't drain you, right? Have you ever felt like, what, what, you know, some of the routines that you like, I don't know, you, you add it to your life, you know, you're, you're done with it and you're like, fuck, <laughs> you know, it's, it's almost like a, I've done a, a, a full day's of work or you think you've already done a lot or accomplished a lot where I think like routines should just come naturally. The things that actually just naturally energize you. Yeah, um, I've definitely had moments where the routine would be like way too burdensome. Like it would just, you know, feel like work, you know, I feel like before Mm -hmm. I even got back down to my desk, like I literally like was already completely burnt out (laughs) 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 because I'm like doing all these like step by step things. Um, I, I remember I used to like read for an hour and then I would go to the gym. For an hour and then by the time i'm like at my desk it's already like 12 p uh 12 a.m or like 1 p.m and i'm yeah. just starting work you know and i'm already stressed out because i've spent all this time that i could be doing work you know <laughs> doing, doing, doing all these things <laughs> so um i mean the way i got around with that was just like switching it up so like i'll go to the gym in the evening now um, which is usually mm. the time i'm not productive so i'll just like switch it in a way where it's more optimized for that specific time um another thing i actually i did something new i used to read physical hard copy books but now what i do is i listen to audiobooks and just clean the house and then by like cleaning the house you get that fulfillment and before you even start work your house is like completely clean so your mind's clean and you're ready to go and mm-hmm. you've already learned something from listening to audiobooks so kind of incorporating those things to be extra mm. productive so you're like yeah, doing yeah. two things at once yeah, yeah. good stuff and uh to, to wrap things up i want to hear um what well you don't have to get too specific i know because um maybe you're trying to keep things the things uh uh secretive and by the way uh, i completely respect that like you know um the fact that not not every entrepreneur needs to be like on social media, uh, speaking their speaking their uh, you know thoughts and all that stuff. Uh, but what what are you excited for going forward? Um, what is kind of the the plan, the vision? Are you like when do you think you're going to transition fully from the ecom agency that has given you so much uh, to purely the ecom brand that you're building? Do you think you're going to have the ecom agency teaching you all, a lot of stuff and and obviously bringing the cash flow uh, while you have the ecom brand? Do you see that? Uh, as a possibility like what are your thoughts going into that this new stage and this new transition of uh, an agency owner to be honest i don't know um what i do know is that i'll definitely keep doing the the whole agency spiel for a while uh up until you know this e-com business like i think it's just at a, at a point where it will take up too much of my time um running the e-com business and at that point, I'll, I'll have to make that decision. But I, I don't know how long that's going to take. It also depends on how quickly everything grows, if, if it blows mm-hmm. up or doesn't blow up, you know. Um, mm-hmm. But either way, it's nice to know that I always have that uh, that backup um, mm-hmm. cash flow business. And, you yeah. know, I can funnel that money back into the e-commerce brand as well. Mm-hmm. Um, but, yeah, I'm just really excited to see where this is headed. Um, 
it's it's a it's a big project and you know it could could go very fast or it could go very slow i don't know yeah yeah because do you have any like goals in mind it doesn't have to be financial but do you guys have like any any like benchmarks or anything that uh that you're looking at doing yeah i mean we're hoping to be to be an eight-figure brand within three years that's that's the goal um We're hoping to, you know, our first round of stock we're going to order. Um, we'll probably be releasing it in September. So we're hoping to just sell that out as soon as possible, hopefully within a month. Um, so those are those are two primary targets. Yeah, and for the rest, uh, you know, we're open to exiting the company at some point mm-hmm. and then just building another brand from there. Because I, I think like, with with e-commerce building e-commerce brand like the cash flow part is um is one thing but where real e-commerce business owners make the money is when they exit the brand and they get sure. the, you know the lump sum of cash yeah um so that's definitely definitely something mm-hmm. to consider um but uh, how about you man how about how about your uh e-com business 100 million yeah well that that's what i think uh i think we're gonna be able to achieve uh I'm, I'm, uh, obviously look, um, one of the things about me is like, like, I, I don't just fix it on, on the money side of things. Like I, I just want to build a really cool brand and uh, the competitive entrepreneur in me, it just wants to be like the biggest brand in, in my space. Right. Uh, so it's not so much about, about like the money or not, because I think when you obsess over the money, like you lose, right. Um, like honestly, I, I, I gave it that title because you know how YouTube works, right. Um, uh, like the, the series, but, uh, it's not so much, obviously, I think I think we can definitely hit that. Um, uh, and but but I'm not going into it. like I, I don't need the econ brand money, you know, to like sustain me. And and that's one thing the 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 edges that I think like even you do uh, you have as well, right? The fact that like you have the cash flow from the ecom agency, right? You have all the skills that you've acquired from the ecom agency as well, but also the cash flow and and the peace of mind and the money that that you can reinvest into this this brand. And so I'm not like I don't really need this to work. I know it's gonna work. Um, cause we're putting, you know, I'm putting all, all my, my efforts into it, but, um, I think, I think that that's where, where I'll be able to take it. Um, and I'm probably exit out, uh, exit out, um, at some point, but I, I do think that it's going to be like a, a, a long, it, it's definitely a long-term thinking, uh, a long-term, um, long-term project for me, right? It's not like I'm just trying to build something and then just sell it as, as soon as possible. It's like, I want to, I want to build something that like has longevity and that can hopefully, you know, even when I'm gone, like still be a massive thing uh so that's kind of the mindset that i'm going into it even even though it's my fault i'm look you know how how the entrepreneurship journey works like you think this at the start and then everything just changes right and then like you open your eyes to to other possibilities but i think i I will still run my ecom agency for a very long time like you know build nine to like the biggest ecom incubator in the world um but uh i do want to have this false brand this false ecom brand be like some like a big thing that, uh, that I do for many, many years. Yeah, absolutely. I totally resonate with that as well with, you know, the, not the financial goals that matter the most. Cause mm-hmm. you know, you have the cash flow from your other business. So you, I think for us as well, it's like the focus is really li- lies on like really building something and building like the best product out there. Mm-hmm rather than like actually thinking about okay how can you get the most sales possible how can you get the 100%. most cash flow possible it's like 100%. don't really care about that at this stage you know um yeah at all so yeah and dude like even with my um like i'm talking to my team and like obviously you know they you know i, I need to feed the team right and, and all that stuff uh but i don't give a shit if i don't make any money in the first batch like i know i'm gonna but because you know obviously we're looking at profit margins and but but purely for the reason of like being able to spend more on on the ads being able to like just have a, a more a healthier like funnel essentially but like I, if i don't make any money in like the first batch or like the second batch or like the whole year i don't like personally right as as personal income i don't i really don't care um cuz again i'm i'm thinking about the long term and i'm thinking about like it's just fun for me you know like to build cool shit and um and 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 also like you know, the, the way I think as well is like, I want to, cause I, I talk about this a lot, the fact that like, you know, with the e-commerce agency model, just, I mean, you, you're, you're a great example of this. Like you, you, you experience all the stages, you know, the service-based business, then the kind of the, the more holistic, you know, e-commerce incubator, then like building your own income brands. And I want to be 
I want to sh share with people what, what I'm learning throughout that whole process so that others can pretty much like replicate it within other like industries and all that stuff. And I think it's just such a good model because like, you know, we have, we've gotten the cash flow, we've gotten the skills, we've gotten like the contacts even, right? You know, for example, your media buyer um, from that previous phase, now you're ready to crush it in a completely different field. Spot on, man. Um, absolutely. And they're all, they're all so uh, complimentary, right? So it's like, mm -hmm. All those years of building something, you, you use the same skills to build something new as well. Mm -hmm. And I, I think that's that's really the investment you're making. It's mm -hmm. um, you're just all you're doing is just translating those skills onto another kind of business model, pretty much. Yeah, yeah. And, and it, that's why it's so powerful. It's so powerful, man. That that's why I'm super passionate about it because, like, I I feel like a lot of people don't understand. Like, it's it's not just if you commit to something, if you commit time and energy into something you you'd want that thing to like you know have returns over the years right it's not just money that you want to uh, you know you, you want you want money to have returns over the years right and, and grow exponentially like you want yourself to be able to grow over the years that's what when i see like other business models is like yeah cool you can make a few bucks here and there uh in the short term but like you know how is that going to serve you later down the line like life is a journey life is a game right and so if you can like uh, you know use all the time and energy that you're going to put anyways into any side hustle or any business, like you might as well have a long-term plan in mind. It doesn't have to be starting an e brand, but at least like you garner skills that are going to be applicable for anything. I mean, growing anything on brand, uh, growing um, any anything online is, is such a valuable asset, you know? Absolutely, yeah. I mean, yeah, you could just completely waste a lot of time like trying to focus on just making cash, right? Like yeah, just yeah. generating cash flow with something you're not interested in at all. Um, but I think with, with the agency, with freelancing, with building e-com brand, they're all, the skill sets are pretty much the same. And it's all, it's all in the same kind of realm of, of marketing. Um, you're all, you're always learning new marketing skills. You're seeing mm -hmm. businesses from a different angle. Um, yeah. It's all complimentary. Yeah. I think that's why you also had, um, you had success, right? Because like you focus on, on, on the game and you focus on the process and, Obviously, you wanted the money, right? The money came, um, but like you were just, you know, trying to be the best um, that 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 you could uh, that you could be every single like day, every single week. Um, and I think when you just focus on that, like it just becomes, and, and you have the right roadmap, it just becomes pretty effortless. Definitely, yeah. As soon as you're not dependent on like money to, you know, like meet your basic needs, like pay for your rent and, and your food, mm. like at that point, it's like it's just fun to build things. And yeah. Yeah. It doesn't really matter, like, you know, uh, am I profitable within my first year or not? Because you're just constantly building something. And it was with the agency as well. You know, it's like after your first yeah. client, it's like, okay, got my first client, you know, they pay all the bills. It's all good. Mm -hmm. Now I can just focus on actually building something uh, and mm -hmm. moving this thing forward. Yeah. And, and those are, those are dangerous. Yeah. Those are dangerous entrepreneurs. No, those, those are dangerous entrepreneurs, you know, um, like the, the ones that are not outcome dependent, um, Cause like they don't need much, right? It's just like they're focused on, on creating. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And, and I guess you could become less dangerous if you start spending all that money you're earning on like very fancy holidays and like yeah. buying a Lambo or something, or yeah. like you, you, you rent out this place for, you know, crazy amount of money. Cause then you're just increasing your expenses. Right. And then you're putting more pressure yeah. on yourself to have to perform. Uh, but if you keep those expenses low and, uh, mm -hmm. And for the rest, you don't really care about the outcome. I mm. think that's a really good spot to be in. Yeah. Yeah. Look, we might be going head to head uh, with the e brand. You never know. It would be cool, though. It would be really cool. Imagine uh, two titans in the in, in the supplement space over the next few next five years, and <laughs> you used to be a mentee of mine, and and, and you went through like the exact same process. Uh, that's cool, man. That's cool. Uh, that that's always good. Uh, good to see as a as a mentor. Uh, but that's a really good way to uh, to wrap it up. I think. Um, any final comments any any final final things that you want to say uh, to people watching as well i, I say um, focus on one thing you know like keep your focus um you know whether it's one industry or one niche or something like this just maintain mm -hmm. that focus and with the right amount of resilience and the right amount of work you're going to make it happen and i know it sounds cliche but it, it is very true it's um if you want it bad enough if your why is strong enough like, why are you doing this? If that's strong enough, you're, you're going to make it happen no matter what. I, I think you don't need to be a, a neuroscientist to, to be doing this kind of stuff. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's all about just getting the reps in, 
um, becoming stronger and stronger as you learn, as you fail. And uh, yeah, I would say that's the main thing, maintaining the focus. All right, man. Then uh, that's that. Uh, thank you for uh, coming on. I appreciate you. Um, and yeah, you know, obviously we'll we'll keep uh, we'll keep in touch. Um, you might well you gotta let me know if uh, if you're gonna make that uh, the next uh, 10k club uh, meetup uh, over Zoom. Uh, that I think that that'll be fun. But uh, but yeah, man, I want to acknowledge you for uh, putting the work for having that resilience and um, and for constantly like trying to level up, you know, and going through the phases and just staying. Uh, staying true and and uh staying focused on the on the process so yeah yeah appreciate you man and when are you when are you gonna release your your brand when is it coming out do you know uh not exactly i mean we do have a few dates in mind but you know um and, and, and we're planning towards those dates we're doing everything towards those dates but um you know things things usually get late so uh I, i'm not like i don't have a specific date in mind uh just yet Cool, man. Maybe we'll release on the same day, you know. <laughs> Dude, that, would be, that would be fun. That would be fun. But yeah, man. Uh, that's that. And um, we'll, uh, we'll be speaking. We'll, we'll be in touch. Sounds good, man. All right, man. Big hug. Bye-bye. Peace. Yes, okay, so that is that for the interview with Nick. Definitely a very interesting chat and I'm very looking forward to seeing how that econ brand at launch turns out. Now, if you're looking to get results like Nick and you also want to build a business that has true longevity, that adds real value to real people and that most importantly gives you the transferable skills so that you can go ahead and start other businesses down the line so that it's not just a one-trick pony, right? You're building an e-com agency, right? That can provide a lot of cash flow that can get you past the 10K a month mark in record-breaking time, but that can also enable you and give you the transferable skills so that you can open up other online businesses of your own, go ahead and check out the link in the description. That is a link to my mentorship application. You can book in a time that works with my team and myself, and we can jump on a call to see if you'd be a good fit. So that is that for this interview. Hope you took some nuggets away from it. And with that being said, hope everything is going well in your journey, and I will see you in the next one. Peace.